Good evening from the Pompeii Observatory. A couple of weeks ago, Dwarf Lab announced the preview of Dwarf 3. And when I attempted to play a game by having a poll each day, asking you, the viewers, to guess the various characteristics of Dwarf 3, a Dwarf Lab released uh, many of those characteristics. So tonight I'm going to compare C-Star, the S50, to what we know about the Dwarf 3. Uh, Dwarf 3 is supposed to have newer and better optics. Uh, that proof of the pudding will be in the eating, so I will not comment about that. They did reveal that the aperture will be 35 millimeters, which came as a surprise. It's not 24 and it's not 50. Uh, that gives a focal length of 150. The equivalent focal length, that's uh, if you are using a traditional old 35 millimeter camera, that will be the lens that you need to put on it to get the same field of view, a 737 millimeter. The 45 millimeter for the wide sensor uh, would make it a traditional uh, 35 millimeter camera for all intents and purposes. A new sensor, IMX678, uh, same resolution as Dwarf 2, but most interesting is that the wide angle camera will now allow for astro imaging and uh, a stacking of the data. An internal battery with 10,000 milliamp hour. John Nemes, and I will have a link downstairs for uh, the video that he uh, made, uh, went through extreme lengths in comparing Dwarf 2 and Dwarf 3. Uh, I'm going to borrow his chart and add a C-Star S50 column to it and discuss it from there. So I am grateful to John for creating this uh, table. And uh, this is with the C-Star S50 added to it. Uh, for a starter, we're looking at 50 millimeters as opposed to 35 for the Dwarf 3, uh, 24 for the Dwarf 2. The more relevant number here is that of equivalent focal length. The C-Star at uh, 1750 millimeter is uh, just about twice that of the Dwarf. Uh, which means if you are attempting to use the Dwarf 3 for planetary imaging, uh, you will be disappointed. It is only marginally better than the Dwarf 2. Certainly we talked about the newer uh, sensor in IMX678 as opposed to the 462. An 8 megapixel as opposed to the 2 megapixel for the C-Star. Dwarf moves fast, uh, no doubt. Dwarf 2 and Dwarf 3 can move up to 30 degrees per second. Uh, the C star at its highest speed is moving at 6 degrees per second. Rotation, uh, we know that the base of uh, the dwarf does not move, which I find an advantage because I won't have to worry about cord wrap. In the case of the C star, everything moves on a tripod. Hence, you get the full 360 degrees. Internal battery, in both cases, with the C-STARS battery at 6,000 milliamp hour, Dwarf 3 at 10,000. Uh, I don't know if it matters. I usually plug mine into an AC adapter and let them run all night. The tripod mount, it's a 3 8 inch for the C-STAR, 1 quarter inch for the Dwarf. It should not matter much. Uh, Dwarf 3 claims 20 meter range for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth as opposed to 10 meters for C-Star and Dwarf 2. That should reduce the number of dropped connections by a lot. Uh, right now both my C-Star and Dwarf suffer from dropped connections when I am far from them. iOS and Android 
Uh, I want to give a plug here to the Alpaca ASCOM package that uh, uh, Dr. Kai developed that allows the C-Star to be controlled like any ASCOM device. Uh, have not seen one developed for the Dwarf yet. Internal memory, uh, the SD card, 128GB comes standard with the Dwarf 3, 64GB with the C-Star. Both will provide JPEG and RAW images. Temperature is not much of a concern from minus 10 to, to 40 versus minus 10 to, 50, to 45. Uh, this is where the big difference comes into play. Two lenses as opposed to one for the C-Star. And Dwarf 3 has added now the ability to stack images from the wide angle lens. That, for the first time, allows us now to take images of the Milky Way, which uh, the C-Star would not really allow us to do that. With a 50 degree wide angle uh, versus the really one degree in the case of the C-Star, uh, that is a big difference. On the other hand, the 3.38 degrees for the telephoto lens compared to the 1.29 degree for the C-Star, given the resolution of the sensor, uh, that means that uh, C-Star is going to have about 50% better quality of the image than the Dwarf 3 would give us. And what I'm trying to say here is, uh, per arc second, you're going to have a lot more pixels with C-Star than you would with Dwarf. It's a simple uh, mathematics here. Uh, dividing the 3856 by 3 degrees versus dividing the 1920 by 1 and a quarter degree, uh, you get more pixels per degree with the C star than you would with Dwarf. The Dwarf 3 app and firmware will allow creating of mosaics. Right now, the only way you can create mosaics with C star is by using uh, Bruno that. Uh, leverages the Alpaca ASCOM interface that Kai has developed. And there you can create, uh, albeit in an awkward way, you can create uh, mosaics. The processor is certainly the state of the art for the Dwarf 3. Uh, C-Star and Dwarf 2 use an older processor. And finally, both C-Star and Dwarf 3 provide RTSP for a streaming protocol. Uh, some couple of trivial uh, data, 6.6 .6 pounds versus 2.9 pounds. The, sister, the Dwarf 3 is only a quarter pounder heavier than Dwarf 2. The sensor pixel size, uh, I am a sucker to bigger pixel sizes. If you are imaging, if you're doing deep sky, uh, imagery, the larger your pixels, the more uh, photons to electrons you are converting or photons to photos. Uh, 2.9 microns, we went from dwarf 2 at 1.45 1 1 to 2 in the dwarf 3. Big improvement. Uh, C star is 2.9 microns, which is twice uh, the size, which makes it four times the surface of the dwarf, and in this case it is 50% uh, bigger, 45% bigger than the dwarf 3, which is makes it uh, surface wise a lot twice. Dwarf 3 has added a dual band light pollution filter, which dwarf 2 did not have. And uh, this is uh, intriguing. They advertise it as 12 nanometer for the hydrogen alpha and 20 nanometers for the O3, oxygen 3, whereas uh, C-star is 20 and 30. The smaller, the narrower, the better, obviously. If you're looking at an Optolong filter, it's going to be 7 nanometers. So uh, when it comes to imaging nebula, I expect the Dwarf 3 to be far superior than the C-star in this case especially for the larger nebula that would not fit 
in the C-STARS field of view, but will be a lot more comfortable with the wider field of view. It's not clear at this point, uh, from what I read, if the dual band filter will be applicable to the wide angle or only to the telephoto lens. Uh, we will see. Last slide. I'm going to give stars <laughs> for what I think are the superior features of each of those telescopes. Uh, starting with the field of view, glass has its privileges. A 50 millimeter aperture will always be better than 35 millimeter aperture. The immediate uh, result here is uh, C-star is likely to do better with the smaller targets. I'm not talking about planetary. Neither of those two telescopes will be good let alone excellent for Saturn or Jupiter, let alone Mars or Venus. These are not intended for planetary imaging. Dwarf 3 has a newer processor. I gave it a star. And uh, 8 megapixels. Actually, the star there is for having the two sensors as opposed to just one. Uh, going further down, I like the 20 meter the increased Wi-Fi and Bluetooth range. Uh, this, this will prove significant, especially for those who wish to operate remotely. Uh, bigger memory included. The other big star here is uh, the fact that the wide angle lens will be able to do photo, video, astro, panoramic, burst, and time lapse. Uh, that, that is huge. That is big. Especially for the much larger targets, uh, we will be able to start enjoying uh, the California Nebula or the North American Nebula and uh, some of the bigger objects in there. And I look forward to being able to get to the Milky Way with the Dwarf 3. However, when it comes to galaxies and the smaller objects, I think the C star is going to be far superior to Dwarf 3, uh, regardless of binning. Uh, it is going to have more pixels per arc second than uh, Dwarf 3 will, about 50% more. Uh, the third party software that uh, Kai, that Dr. Kai Jung developed uh, for C star uh, allows us to control C star from Stellarium and thereby the go to to a RA deck that used to be a limitation of C-star no longer is. A mosaic tool that will be coming with the Dwarf 3 uh, obviously is a good feature. Much newer processor. The 0.29 microns I still think is the better sensor in that sense in that case uh, for C-Star, even though it is an older sensor. And finally, the dual band filter. I look forward to seeing what Dwarf 3 will do with Nebula. Uh, that should be exciting. The Dwarf Lab folks also talk about uh, bird identification with their telescope. That will be an interesting feature. I'd like to see if they indeed allow us to look at a bird and to identify it. And last but not least, and likely to be the most important characteristic that is not here, is price. Uh, I look forward to May 30th when uh, Dwarf Lab unveils how much they plan to sell the Dwarf 3 for. Uh, right now, uh, I paid just under $400 for Dwarf 2 and just under 400 for C-Star S50. I was an early adopter for both telescopes. Uh, I would be very hesitant to pay much more than that for the Dwarf 3. Uh, as long as it is uh, within that range in the five to $700, I am likely to place my order on May 30th. If there is a comma in the price, I will just sit and wait it out. So that's all for now. Uh, thanks again to John. 
uh, NEMES for uh, providing the table, providing the foundation for this comparison. Uh, let us hope that uh, on May 30th, Dwarf Lab will indeed surprise us with another gem uh, at a good price. For now, so long from the Pompeii Observatory.